All right, so now let's talk about transformers. So transformers are a tool that allows you to turn or transform, let's say 12,000 volts to 400,000 volts and then back down to 240 volts, which comes into your house. Um, and the way you do that is by, you could have a 12,000 volt, kilovolt or 12,000 volt voltage um, to bring it up to 400,000 volts, you're gonna drop the current down quite a bit. Um, but that means you're not gonna have as much transmission losses due to high current traveling through those uh, high tension power lines. Um, anyway, okay. So the way a transformer works is you put your current through a loop of wire which generates a magnetic field and then you have either more or less turns over here that um, uses that magnetic field to generate a current in this wire. So let's remember all of our Faraday's laws. So you put current uh, going into this coil and when current goes through a coil, it generates a magnetic field. And then a magnetic field going through a coil generates a current, okay? And so then uh, we draw the symbol like this and a transformer allows you to turn, uh, you know, whatever voltage you have here and current going through there you're gonna get more of it here because you have more turns of the um, loop here since the induced EMF is equal to N times the magnetic field. So you're gonna have the same magnetic field going through all this, same cross-sectional area, but if you have more N here, more N turns, then you're going to have more of a uh, uh, voltage induced. Um, so we call the uh, terminals here, the primary and the secondary, or P and S, and uh, just has to do with the input and the output. And so you can, um, this is the transform equation here, the uh, voltage um, in the secondary over the voltage in the primary is equal to the number of turns in the secondary divided by the number of turns in the primary. So if you've got uh, 10,000 loops uh, divided by 20,000 loops, um, so you've got 10,000 loops on the secondary, 20,000 loops on the primary, and let's say you've got uh, uh, 120 volts coming in on the uh, primary. The question might be, what is the number, uh, what kind of voltage is coming out on the secondary? So you can just solve for that, multiply by 120, and uh, that'll give you the uh, total voltage coming out. Okay, you can rearrange, uh, rearrange it to put it in terms of the current here just using P equals IV. Um, and you can get the uh, another equation in terms of the primary and secondary voltages and the currents coming out of the primary and secondaries. And you can also just put the current in terms of the number of turns. Uh, so depending on your the question and what you know, you might use any one of those. Okay, two types of transformers, a step up and a step down. So if you go from a high number of turns to a low number of turns, you're stepping down. If you go from a low number of turns to a high number of turns, you're stepping up, okay? Um, and it just has to do with your transformation of power current from one side to another. Um, this here is trying to show you that uh, transformers only really work um, on AC circuits where it's oscillating like this because the only way you get a uh, magnetic field generated in a coil is when you have a changing magnetic field or a changing flux. So that means you need your current to flow through and flow back and flow through and flow back. And during that constant up and down and up and down and up and down, you're constantly generating a, uh, a magnetic field and that, or you're constantly changing your magnetic field and that means you're constantly inducing an EMF in the secondary one. Okay, but what this is trying to say here is that you can mimic uh, a, uh, excuse me, you can mimic a uh, uh, transformer with a DC circuit by flipping the DC on uh, quickly, on and off, um, because then you're changing, you're constantly collapsing the field and energizing it and collapsing and energizing and collapsing and so on. Okay, and then um, blah, 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 examples. Okay, so then um, the uh, uh, electrical safety things, there's fuse boxes and uh, um, circuit breakers and things like that. Basically, um, anytime a circuit breaker feels a little bit too much heat 
or if you have a little bit too much current being pulled through it, there's a, a magnet that will uh, be induced that connects, uh, disconnects the circuit and tries to save you. Uh, GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupt, or a ground fault interrupt circuit in your bathroom, same thing, it tries to measure an excess amount of current, and when it does that, um, it can shut the circuit down. Okay, so uh, those are pretty cool devices. Okay, so inductance is the case of, um, it's kind of how a transformer works, but let's say you have two coils next to each other. Um, you're going to use one coil to induce a current uh, in another, okay? So you've got a current going through here, oscillating an AC current, generates a magnetic field. This coil over here, the second coil, is gonna see some of that magnetic field and it's gonna induce a current. Um, when that happens, it's called mutual inductance. It's when um, the coil of one is used to generate an EMF in another coil, okay? And then uh, uh, you can calculate what the EMF is in one and two, and the uh, effectiveness of the transformation of putting the magnetic field from one into another and generating in the EMF, the ratio of that is called M. Um, that's the mutual inductance, and the measure has a unit of Henry's, um, which is just how good of an inductor or a, uh, uh, yeah, I guess inductor it is. For example, um, inside your heater, sorry, in the heating element in your dryer, you're putting a huge current through that thing to heat it up in, in order to dry your clothes. So what they do is they loop it around, okay, loop it around in one direction and then have it come back in the other direction so that next to each other the current is down, up, down, up, down, up. So the induced magnetic field cancels out uh, from, its, uh, from each other. Um, and that is a way to prevent the... Um, a giant magnetic field from setting up a huge current in the actual case of your dryer, which could maybe shock you or something. Okay, so self-inductance um, is here, and it's uh, called number L, and that's a, um, basically, here's what an inductor looks like in a schematic diagram. Okay, and L is the uh, unit of Henry's, and that's if, um, yeah, let's say you have a current coming through its own thing, going to take a little while for the um, um, for the circuit to sort of push current all the way through and um, that's called an inductor okay so go back down here uh, blah 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 so an induct uh, so yeah EMF is the inductor times a change in current over change in time um, in inductors like this the geometries usually stays the same um, solve for L you get this and D flux DI, um, change in flux, change in current, um, and there's your equation for the inductor of a solen inductance of a solenoid. So let's say you've got a solenoid and you want to know what its inductance is. It's mu naught times n squared, the number of turns, times the cross-sectional area of the uh, solenoid, divided by the length of the solenoid. That tells you its inductance, okay? And that's the ability, um, if you want to measure the EMF generated when you push a current through there, um, then uh, that you need to know the inductance of the solenoid to do that. Okay, but again, it's measured in Henry's. All right, energy stored in an inductor is kind of like a capacitor. You have one half Li squared, okay, and uh, you can calculate what that is. So when you turn a current through a solenoid, it's going to, the current as it flows through, it's going to generate a magnetic field. Uh, that flows through it. It's going to take a little bit of time to set up that magnetic field. When you turn it off, the magnetic field is going to collapse, and by Lenz's law, you're going to have a, an induced current, so you're going to have some energy still so stored in the inductor, um, and that's one half Li squared. Okay, so, um, uh, yeah, example there. All right, so let's say you put a resistor and an inductor in series, and you turn the circuit on. So, it doesn't immediately turn on. It takes a little bit of time for it to reach maximum current, okay? Because um, the change in current uh, changes the flux, which induces an EMF opposing the change. Um, so it takes a little while to uh, get this thing fully charged. 
And so it's just like charging a capacitor, the same type of idea. You've got an exponential turn here. Instead of RC being the, the characteristic time constant, we have L over R. So instead of tau being RC, we have tau being L over R. Same idea, you turn your circuit on, the current initially starts at zero, and it takes a while for your current to reach a maximum value. Um, and then it, when you turn the circuit off, it takes a little while for the current to actually reach back down to zero um, before it completely discharges. Okay, so a couple examples of that. So reactance, inductive, and capacitive. So let's say you put an inductor on, an AC circuit, so you're pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling current through this thing. You have um, the voltage initially, boom, you turn the voltage on, it's immediately a maximum. Uh, but the current is not immediately a maximum. The current takes a little while because of that chart we just showed you to, to reach a maximum value. But then once the voltage hits zero, then we have full current, and then the voltage starts going negative, and the current starts decreasing, and then, so you can see that the current is always lagging behind the uh, voltage here. The voltage is always leading uh, the lag. So then um, the uh, current through an inductor is, oops, sorry, given by this, where V is the RMS voltage and XL is defined to be uh, 2 pi times the frequency of your AC circuit uh, times L times the inductance of the uh, inductor. And for a solenoid, remember you can calculate what that is, or it gives you the answer in Henry's. Um, X of L is called the inductive reactance um, because the inductor uh, reacts to impede the current. Okay, so um, that's what that is, blah, blah, blah. Capacitors have the same thing, uh, same sort of thing. You've got your, uh, initially you turn the uh, uh, voltage on, you start at maximum voltage, zero current, and as your voltage uh, decreases down, um, or sorry, as time goes on, your voltage is gonna decrease down because your AC voltage being supplied, and you're gonna reach minimum current, and then maximum, and so on. Okay, and um, uh, you have a similar thing here. The current through a capacitor is given by V over XC, where V is the RMS voltage. XC is um, 1 over 2 pi F times the capacitor. So both of these are similar ideas here. Um, they just have to do with uh, these types of things in uh, AC, uh, AC circuits. Okay, so then um, an RLC circuit is, you know, we put our current through here got a resistor and then take some time for that to charge up, take some time for that to charge up, and then we've got a voltage that's varying with time. Um, so uh, we call this whole thing um, with everything together Z, or the uh, impedance, okay? And uh, um, Z is the total impedance of the circuit. And uh, it's just this value there, uh, which is the resistor times the capacitive uh, and inductive reactance, so XL minus XC squared, okay? So it's a little bit confusing, um, but um, that just is a way to uh, uh, calculate what the overall uh, impedance of the circuit is. Okay, and then, um, yeah, let's continue on here. Yeah, so F0 here, if you want to calculate the resonant frequency of an RLC circuit, um, it's just 1 over 2 pi square root LC. It's what we call the natural frequency at which the circuit would oscillate if it was not driven by a voltage source. Um, so at this frequency, the inductor and capacitors effects cancel out. So the uh, total uh, impedance is just R, and your current is at a maximum. So you can see your current versus frequency here. You get maximum current at your magic frequency there. Okay. Um, yeah, phase angle. It's a little bit weird there, ending. Okay, but um, so this phase angle, angle uh, phi um, has to do with the uh, way the current and voltage behave in the circuit, and it's just R divided by the Z. So you can solve for what uh, the, the phase angle is by taking the inverse of that. Okay. All right, so example here, and that's the end, okay?